Hey, what are some historical misconceptions that really annoy you? I'm so glad you asked. My biggest pet peeve is probably how ancient Romans are portrayed in television and film. They're always portrayed as the ancient equivalent of like the European 17th, 18th, and 19th century empires. Which is incredibly untrue. I mean, did the Romans do absolutely horrific things? Yes. But so did pretty much every other civilization in antiquity, and the Romans just get the most flack for it for some reason. Also, Romans didn't outright just conquer territories, much like they're portrayed in the media. Especially during the Roman Republic era, it was usually a slow and gradual process, with minimal changes to the everyday person. Instead of swearing allegiance to some random king, you now swore allegiance to the Senate and people of Rome. It's only the notable exceptions, like Carthage, for example, that stick out. Hey, what are some historical misconceptions that really annoy you? Marrying young girls was considered normal or, like, even common in the early modern period. It just isn't. If you were caught having gay sex in the early modern period, you would die. You would like go to trial but you most likely will be fine um the cases where they died it seems like there was other shit going on to be fair people didn't have sex before marriage they definitely did um because marriage is a concept has changed so like once you said you're gonna marry someone the intention is there and you can have sex um so yeah a lot of people did have sex before marriage um in our concept but they would be married if like they thought they were married that uh people used to work really hard all the time um, they were farmers, they did do a lot of practical work um, often, but they had a lot of time off and um, they most likely worked less than we do now, so. What are some historical misconceptions that really annoy you? <laughs> I have a few, but my favorite, because it's just so easy to disprove, is when people try and tell me women didn't wear pants in the 1950s. Like, okay, Jenny from Nebraska, you want to come onto my account and history check me? Let's talk about the pants women wore in the 1950s. 1950s women wore all sorts of pants for all sorts of different occasions. These styles ranged from jeans to trousers, and they even had something called a hostess gown, which was part pants, part skirt, and was often worn for cocktail parties. So no, women didn't just wear skirts and dresses in the 1950s. I'm currently wearing reproduction jeans from the brand Freddy's of Pinewood. If you want authentic 1950s denim, go ahead and check them out. Hey, what are some historical misconceptions that really annoy you? That pirates were big, burly white men who stole gold and women at their leisure. Most pirates were gay. You couldn't be openly gay and serve in the English, French, or Spanish navies, so you fucking left your ship to go be gay on a different ship. They were also some of the first communists at a time where that word didn't really exist, so they called themselves anarchists. But they were all about social welfare and egalitarian rule and distribution of wealth. Furthermore, there's also a lot of theories that there were transgender pirates, uh, lesbian pirates, and even some Taino pirates, some of the remaining natives to the Caribbean, uh, joined up because nothing says decolonization like killing Spanish on their own ship. The reason we see pirates the way we do now is because in the late 1600s, early 1700s, the British, French, and Spanish governments got together and just fucking killed everyone that they could, burned a lot of documentations, and there's very little left to show that they were actually pretty smart. Instead, they're portrayed as fairly evil and savage to keep them as unattractive. Hey, what are some historical misconceptions that really annoy you? Viking was a job, not a description of an entire culture. Julius Caesar is not the first emperor of Rome. Native Americans had cities that women do not often have a place in war in most cultures around the world. The Vikings had shield maidens and we know of at least one warband leader. That most people died in battle. That's not the part that most people died in. For most of history, up until the world wars, most people died running away. That Cleopatra was Egyptian. She's a... Greek descendant of Ptolemy, one of Alexander the Great's generals. That Thermopylae was fought by 300 dudes. There was like 1,500 other guys there holding the last stand, and there was an entire naval battle happening offshore so that the Persians couldn't just land a bunch of troops right next to the Spartans and kill the fucking lot of them. That any of the South American people weren't civilized, they had- Hey, what are some historical misconceptions that really annoy you? Yes, it's my time to use my degree. I'm so excited. Okay, so 
I have a whole lot of them because I have a bachelor's degree in history, but my biggest one has been my longest for a long time. And I could do an entire series about her, but Cleopatra. Just Cleopatra in general. However, most specifically, how she died. A lot of people are like, oh, she died by a snake bite. There is no way a Egyptian asp could have killed a full-grown woman. Not just one full-grown woman, but three full-grown women. Cleopatra did not commit suicide by a snake bite. Most likely she was poisoned by herself and or Caesar Augustus. So yeah, that's my, that's my least favorite historical misconception. Actually, Cleopatra's entire life is a historical misconception, but we won't go into that right now. Hey, what are some historical misconceptions that really annoy you? Medieval peasants weren't miserable, isolated people. There were several saint feast days a year, and there's some evidence to say they went on vacation more than we do now. Hey, what are some historical misconceptions that really annoy you? The historical misconception that annoys me the most is that we have no idea how the Egyptians built the pyramids. Because it's simply not true. We know exactly how they built the pyramids. They fucking painted it and showed us how they did it. But I don't actually want to talk about that here. What I want to talk about is the prevalence of ritual objects and ceremonial sites in the field of archaeology. I'm going to let you in on a little secret here, folks. Not all the time, maybe 50% of the time, ritual object or ceremonial significance is just archaeologist code for, I don't know. And it doesn't mean that those objects or places weren't used in rituals. It just means that we can't easily define their function. So ritual object becomes kind of a nod and a wink to our collective ignorance over the wisdom of the ancients. Hey, what are some historical misconceptions that really annoy you? This one drives me insane. And you're going to have to hear me out for the whole thing on this one. Otherwise, you're going to think I'm crazy. You've heard it. You've heard it a million times. Oh, the divorce rate is 50%. Everybody's getting divorces. Marriages don't succeed. Divorce rate 50%. Bye bye. As if like marriages now aren't as successful as they used to be. It implies that marriages used to last longer and never end divorce. There's a bit of truth to that. They didn't end in divorce. They ended in worse, much worse ways. I don't like my wife anymore. She's a witch. We should burn her at the stake. I don't like my wife anymore. She seems kind of crazy. Let's admit her to a psych ward. I don't like my wife either. I'm just going to disappear and leave her with a gaggle of children with no way to support them. 50% divorce rate just means women can leave and take care of themselves now. It's a good thing. Hey, what are some historical misconceptions that really annoy you? Prehistory edition. The vast majority of the history of life on Earth is spent with single-celled or very simple organisms and not animals. That said, there were lots of really interesting animals long before a single dinosaur showed up. Fish took a while to end up on the scene, and the oceans at the beginning were mostly dominated by invertebrates. Dimetrodon wasn't a dinosaur, it was a proto-mammal. The biggest mass extinction in Earth's history is the one that occurred 252 million years ago when a volcano the size of Siberia erupted. This led to the conditions that created dinosaurs. There was snow before the Ice Age. The Mesozoic had tons of snowy environments. Mammals did well in the Mesozoic. There were lots of them and they were very diverse. Non-avian dinosaurs went extinct because of a freak accident, not because they were evolutionary failures. And birds continue their legacy in every way. Humans only appeared 300,000 years ago. Hey, what are some historical misconceptions that really annoy you? Let's talk about the misconceptions surrounding African history. The first and most obvious one is that we didn't have any notable history of civilizations before colonization. We'll start with the most popular Mali Empire, where they had so much knowledge and they had several riches as well. It allegedly owned half of the old world's gold, and a scholar by the name of Felipe Fernandez Ernesto said that between the 13th and 14th century, it was the richest empire in the world. In Timbuktu, where one of the world's first universities was actually built, Leo Africanus said that one of the highest pricing goods was actually books. I see many unwise people try to troll Somalia for the situation that it's in today, but do people know that Mogadishu used to be the richest city in Africa at one point in the medieval period? Under the Ajaran Empire, they were able to amass a lot of wealth and they were able to even trade with the Chinese. They also successfully defended against the Portuguese invasion two times. Alfa Dapa, a Dutch traveler, compared the Kingdom of Benin in West Africa to Amsterdam. This kingdom also may have been one of the first places to have street lighting around the world. Hey, what are some historical misconceptions that really annoy you? It has to be the argument that our own people sold us into slavery. Now, mind you, slavery did exist in Africa before the colonizers got there. And yes, we did have our own persons in slavery. However, 
All right, now, so the system of slavery that was in Africa is based on debts. So I owe you, say, $500. I don't have $500 to pay you, so I am indebted to you. And then by so doing, I give you my time. And once that debt is paid off, then my slavery is basically over. So when persons try to defend chattel slavery, which is what... Um, persons in the, Car the slaves in the Caribbean and America went through the whole whipping, beating, no money kind of thing. When people try to defend it with that statement that black people sold their own people into slavery, that is not what they signed up for. That's not the contract they signed.